North High students and staff, remember you are loved more than you know. You are braver than you can imagine. You are more beautiful beyond what you can see. We have a lot of work left to do today, so let's get to it. From inception to finish, I would say it was a little over a year. It was done or close to being done. And then one of our lead actors got murdered and that sort of changed everything. So that added about four months of uh, rethinking and re-editing. I probably spent maybe a month all in, maybe a little bit less. You know, so much of our doc was camera crews just embedding, but our crew was there longer than I was. They were there for about almost eight months. While we were shooting, probably 30, all in, maybe oh, close to 100 people worked on the show. I've generally been a director who is fairly anti-technology. I look to my DPs to say like, do we have good cameras? Do we have good lenses? Is it gonna sound good? Great. I don't concern myself with what cameras we were shooting. Northside is our home but we have issues in this community. How did you first learn about the North High Polars? I went to college in the Twin Cities. I went to school called uh, McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota, which is the sister city of Minneapolis. And I had a wonderful experience. And that was in the late 80s um, when I was there. So when the George Floyd murder happened, I was horrified and disgusted and shocked when I saw that. I couldn't process what I, the Twin Cities I knew with what happened to George Floyd. And I wanted to make some sort of a creative response. And I certainly didn't want it to be, you know, a piece of copaganda that was just like, we love cops, because I didn't feel that way. I, after seeing what Derek Chavin did, I certainly didn't feel that way. And not just Derek Chavin, I'm aware of, you know, other issues with policing. That being said, I have a lot of people in my life who I consider good cops. I was cognizant of how much they and their families were hurting. So I was looking for something to do. And I read this article in the New York Times about a football program in Minneapolis, pretty much in the community where George Floyd was killed, Minneapolis North, that was coached by Minneapolis police officers, many of them who had worked with Derek Shaven. These kids in this community was living in ground zero, was living in an incredible firestorm, a flashpoint for all of the disruption and the disorder that happened after Floyd. And I thought, wow, this seems like it could be interesting. What's going on here? What's going on with the people and the communities actually living with what we're reading about? I didn't get all of it, but I am proud that we were able to spend this much time with the community. And I think really be able to give people a sense of what it's like living um, in an American city in a neighborhood like this. Go. I'm a police officer for North Minneapolis and coach for North High High School. Kind of weird, but I'm building bonds with police. Go. What about meeting with Coach Adams? You know, I understand he was a little bit familiar with your work. Was there a particular project that he was like, okay, yeah, I know this guy. He'll do a good job with us. I mean, they've all seen Friday Night Lights and, and that certainly helped. But it was a process of having meals, hanging out in homes, talking to the kids, going to the school, going to the football games, and just kind of being there. I'm not coming in here with an agenda other than I believe something kind of special and beautiful is happening in this community. That I do believe. I'm not coming here to get anyone. I'm coming here under the thesis that there's a special relationship between these coach cops and these kids and their families. And it's maybe a really beautiful thing and maybe something that can shine a light on some of these issues and can change people's perspectives a bit. And over a period of time, the trust becomes real, just like with any friendship or relationship, it takes time. And our crew became very interconnected with the community. When events unfolded the way they did at the end, it was heartbreaking and shocking and you know, just emotionally devastating for the community, for sure, the team, but also for our crew who'd been living with, in this case, Deshaun Hill and his family for eight months. How many principals, when they say goodbye to their kids, wonder if they're gonna see them the next day? Tell me about getting the call that Deshaun Hill Jr., D. Hill, as his friends and family called him, had been shot and killed. 
I have so many different thoughts. And let me let me start out by saying, like, I'm not qualified to contextualize this and to make sense of this. And I'm not going to try to. I have feelings that, you know, are my feelings that just are a result of what we went through. One of my sort of overarching feelings are like, you know, people get killed in this country every single day. And young people do. And we don't hear about it, or we hear about it for a second. And it's just, you know, we go, oh, that's horrible. And we move on. It's very hard to, to live in that, to feel it. And when it just so happens, Deshaun Hill is just one young man, 15 years old, who was murdered. It happens all the time. Um, it's no more horrific or less horrific than all the other people who were killed. This just happened to happen on our watch. We said we we're going to be there for eight months. He was killed within that time period. And so for me, it's very painful for all of us involved in this. It wrecked us. It was like a freight train that went, went right through all of us. When I got the call, I was in Canada. We had about two weeks left to film. We just filmed Deshaun Hill on a date with his girlfriend where he tried to get, to get a kiss and she wasn't going to have any of it. You know, a 15-year-old kid who happens to be the star of our show, this beautiful young man with incredible future, athletic skills, honor roll student, no gang affiliation, no criminal affiliation, truly a kid doing everything we're told we're supposed to do. Parents together, three sisters, really for no reason, walking out of school, bumps into the wrong person and is murdered. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to make sense of that. And all I could say to our crew, I flew out to Minneapolis and the crew was lost. No one knew what to do. And I said, look, we're going to finish telling the story. This is now a part of our story. We're going to tell it as honestly as we can. We're going to make sure we bring the Hill family and the, the, the coaches and the family and the community into the process meaning we're going to share with them the film before we re lock it and release it. And in my mind, if, if there was a silver lining, Deshaun Hill's life was captured, unlike so many young men and women who are killed and we never hear. I think maybe this can be a beautiful legacy and something that the family can value and cherish. And at this point now, I'm truly only thinking about the family. His mother, Tuesday, and his father, Deshaun Sr., and his sisters. But you, you get tunnel vision. Like, I don't really care anymore whether it makes money for showtime, whether so-and-so likes it, whether so-and-so hates it. Now, suddenly, it's all about, you know, really five people, Deshaun Hill's immediate family, particularly his, his mother. When we showed her the film and I saw tears and laughter and smiles at the end and she said yes please do this that was pretty much everything to not just me our whole creative team i'm picking them up from school i'm taking them to school because i don't want them to be caught at the wrong place at the wrong time that's my biggest fear there are beautiful moments in this where he actually talks about how he'd want to be remembered and there are also chilling moments, like when his mother says that, you know, her worst fear is him walking home from the bus stop. So that scene was always the first scene. Before Deshaun Hill was killed, the first scene of the show was Deshaun Hill and his mother and father and his mother saying exactly what you just said. I'm so scared he's going to get killed walking to the bus stop. I just want him to get out of here. I It, it's it's just absolutely out of my ability to make sense of, you know, it's it's just horrible. And and when I watched that back after he had been killed, I, you know, there's no rule book here. It's nothing you could ever script, nor obviously would you want to. We hear about how dangerous life is in parts of this country. You hear about it. And I heard about it. And I saw that scene with Deshaun Hill's mother saying, you don't understand, I just worry every day someone's gonna kill him. And yeah, okay, I hear it, but I don't really feel it. Now I feel it. Hey, 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 hey. You okay? For all these kids, the violence is nonstop. 
You can hear the gunshots. When them lights flicker at 7 o'clock, you ain't hear none of that. You're getting a chance to show them in the thing that they love the most. You know, what is something that will stand out to you from capturing their football season? There's one play where Deshaun Hill is dropped back and he's he's scrambling and they're putting three big guys bearing down on him. He's about to get hit. And in that moment, you see him kind of find his man strength. And he just seems to get bigger and he pushes one down and runs around the other. And they're closing in on him. He jumps in the air and he just throws this dart to his receiver who catches it. And in that moment, you just kind of, you see what this kid could have been. There was a lot of good football played and they're a very good football program, but particularly that one moment where you sort of look and you see the coaches just screaming and, you know, um, someone starts telling him, that's Patrick Mahomes' business. That's Patrick <laughs> Mahomes' business. And you see his smile and that this kid was really on the path. And I'm glad we captured that moment. We don't lose until we lose. So all I'm asking y'all, don't ever give up on me because I won't give up on y'all.